I am going to show you how to loom knit a teddy bear on the 36 peg Cindy Wood 5H gauge, I mean <laughs> fine gauge loom on the 3 8 inch. But I will let you know that if you use the regular pegs that you've seen, the fatter pegs that you've seen, like on the Nifty Knitter and the Boy and those kinds, you can use the 36 peg. It's going to be the large teddy bear, which you might have seen my blog post for that, but no video. You can watch this video and it will show you how to go in and make that very teddy bear. You're just going to be using a 36 peg loom that's in, in this size peg and I would suggest using a size 5 and up on this size peg loom if you're using the 36 peg that's in this type of peg and um, but for me um, doing the fine gauge I'm only having to do a worsted yarn and right now I am using Lions brand circus unique and circus and it's a quite a few colors but this is firmly stuffed and you're seeing you're not seeing any polyfill white in there so that's that's the big thing with the fine gauge is you can use a worsted yarn e-wrap and you can actually stuff your stuffed animal firmer but if you're going to be using the wider gauging and the larger pegs I'll warn you, you'll, you're going to probably still have some, some white spacing show up. But it will make the larger stuffed animal if you're looking for a big teddy bear. But using this loom, the 36 peg and the fine gauge, will probably make the teddy bear about the same size as my original design that everyone's seen on the 24 peg. So it's going to be about that size but at least I'm getting to use a worsted yarn which has the advantage of the 36 um, peg 3 8 inch gauge Cindy Woodloom. So if you're interested they're doing pre-orders um, and you can pre-order it and it may get, it'll get to a point where you can just purchase it. But right now it's on pre-order. I'm going to get started and I'm going to show you and we're going to start with the head and then I'll show you how to do the arms and the feet. Now you can use a regular color. I decided I wanted to use something fun for a teddy bear and so it's going to be a teddy bear of many colors. <laughs> so what I've done is I've done a, I'm starting with the head and I've done a drawstring cast on okay and you see it there if you do not know what that is we'll put a link right here for the technique of doing a drawstring cast on flat in a flat panel because this here is the back of your head and you're going to be drawstringing it together and you're going to sew it up okay and so this is the back of your head and so I've done a drawstring cast on and then I've e-wrapped I've e-wrapped 11, no, I've e-wrapped 12 rows and so I'm done with the back of my head and I'm ready to do the ear row and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to e-wrap 8 so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. Then I'm going to be working over a series of seven pegs. So I'm going to be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to be working my ear over these seven pegs in a series of short rows. Go ahead and toss those over. So there's row one of the ear. Then ear wrap back seven. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then row two. 
five, six, seven. Then I'm going to e wrap again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So e wrap seven for three rows. Now we're going to e wrap six. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to e wrap five. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And then five. Then we're going to ear up four. One, two, three, four. Three. And that's the tip of our ear. So you should have kind of a curve going on. So we're at the top tip of the ear and we're going to work our way back down to the other side. So we're going to e wrap four. Five and then we're going to e wrap six. e wrap six. Then e wrap seven. Three four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, seven. Okay, for two rows. Okay. Now you should be seeing an ear here caving in. Now for the ear, because I don't want to have to really go in and sew up later, I'm going to be bringing my original loops back. And how you find those is you go to the next unworked peg, which is here. You see that bridge back, and that right there is your original loop. And you're going to just bring it right back on, right there. Then you're going to follow that over. there and that's your next one. Follow that one over to there and there's your next one. Follow that one over. There's your next one. It's like a little bubble in between your bridges. See? There's a bridge and there's a bridge and there's a little bubble at the top. You're going to pick it up and put it back on. And then there's a bridge and there's a bridge so you know your bubbles down here. Which is right there. You gotta put it back on. Now I have been known to cheat and put the actual bridges back on instead of the original loops. And you can. You can go in and you can put that one and then that one back on. But it, uh, it makes it a little uneven. But there's a bridge and there's a bridge so you know your original loop Hold on. And if you get to the other end and you're not real sure you can go back here and follow the bridge back here and pull that up And you will see you have an ear right there. 
At this point, what you want to do next is you want to get to where you can work the other ear. You'll need to e-wrap six to get to your other ear. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And this should get you prepped to start on your other ear. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to ear up seven and this is going to be your ear. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And toss those loops open. That's your first row. Then here's your second row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Working over those pegs in short rows. And then you're going to do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're going to ear up six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're going to ear up five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. You're up five again. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're gonna ear up four. One, two, three, four. Then you're gonna ear up three. And now you're at the top of the ear. Now we gotta work our way back down. So now we're gonna ear up four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to ear up five. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to ear up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to ear up seven for two rows. So here's one, two, three, four, six, seven. Two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Toss those lip saver. And then we're going to do another row of seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And you're maybe saying, well, there's less rows on the second half of the ear than there is the front half. And that's okay. What it'll do is because the first part of the ear that you do is the back half, and the second part is the front half. So the back half being longer will push the ears forward so that the ears will sit forward. Okay. Well, we're going to bring those original loops back and I'll kind of show you the cheating method. Go ahead and follow your bridge and there's going to be your next bridge. Instead of picking up that one, which is your actual original loop, you can pick up this bridge and you can put it back on. Then this is going to be your next bridge and you'll see the bobble between it would be your original stitch. So this is kind of a cheating method here. If you don't feel comfortable trying to find the actual original loop, you can do what I call the cheating method. And it does fine, it just offsets it a little, but not by much. I don't notice that it's so significant that it makes a huge deal. But for those who might be having a little harder of a time, that's how you kind of take the bridges between your stitches or the ladder, I've been told, and pull them up. And so there is ear number one and ear number two. And so now you have two ears 
and then you're going to ear of eight to the beginning. Now we are done with the ear section. We're going to be working the front of the face to the snout section. And what you're going to be doing there is, okay, what you're going to do there is you're going to e-wrap back and forth. You're going to e-wrap back and forth for eight rows. So this is going to be row one. And toss all the bottom loops over. And on those ear pegs, you're going to toss both loops over. Don't know why that one wants to give me trouble. Okay, so you're going to toss both loops. And so you're going to ear wrap back and forth for eight rows, and this is row one. So go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and complete those eight rows and then I will show you the next section to go about working in the snout which is an internal decrease. And I would say that's probably the most challenging part of this pattern. Okay, we've now completed our eight rows, which you can see in front of the ear. And there's our little ears showing up. Now we're going to do the snout area where we'll need to do an internal decrease. That's where we're going to go from 36 pegs to half that amount of stitches. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take that first stitch, move it over, and e-wrap it. Take the next stitch, move it over to the next peg, and e-wrap it. Let's get this better clear. Move that stitch over to the next peg, and e-wrap. Move the next stitch over to the next peg and e wrap. Move the next stitch over to the next peg and e wrap. Doing this all the way around. And that last one, I'm going to move the outer one in one. And then you wrap it. Now, that seemed easy enough, but here's where the challenge comes in. We need all these stitches right beside each other. So I'm going to lift nine stitches up over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and place it right side that one and then that one and just start placing them right beside each other like that taking them off placing them down and there's the last one okay then you're going to go over here and you're going to pick these up and bring them together there's one Two, 
7 and 8. You're going to move 8 over. You're going to place that next one on. And then the next one. That worked out great, right? Well, we're still not done. You see how loose those stitches are? We need them tightened. Well, here's our working yarn. We're going to go to the opposite side, which is over here. And we're going to tighten all those stitches up. Put that last one back on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull it and pull the next one. Pull the next one. Pull the next one. Pull the next one. And the next one. And you will see that they're nice and snug now. Now what you're going to do is you're going to be e-wrapping back and forth for a total of... You're going to be e-wrapping back and forth for a total of eight rows. So you're just going to be e-wrapping like you normally do. And you're going to do that for a total of eight rows. And then you're going to do a drawstring cast off. And that'll finish up your head. Okay, um, I'm down to my casting off. And I want a really smooth nose, so I'm going to do my nose a little differently than I've done in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease every other peg and then draw a string cast off. So I'm going to e-wrap, move to the next peg, toss the bottom loop over, e-wrap the next peg, toss the bottom loop over, move to the next peg, toss the bottom loop over. And that way, when I go to draw string cast off, it's nice and smooth. Bottom loop over. Okay. I am now ready to draw string cast off. So I'm going to snip an end. I'm going to snip a tail and enough where I know I can sew up my end. Okay, and I like to go to the opposite side, take my tail, go to the opposite side, send it through, pull through, take off, send it through, pull through, take off. and tighten it. And as you can see, you have a snout, ears, the back of the head. Now we just kind of need to close this down some. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up my snout and then I go a little bit further back than that. So I go step, step, back up to there. And then close up the back half of the head. So I'll show you how to do that. But when you bring the original loops back on, you don't have to worry about sewing. So let me show you how to sew all those up. Okay. I like to find my very edges, pull that tight, send the needle through there, and I'm going to tie off. my front. I'm 
to get the back taken care of. And here's where I'll probably turn it inside out to try to take care of the back because I'm going to need to do more of a star system to close up the back better. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the needle through the opposite end here. So you'll see here's this end, here's this end. So I'm going to send it through the opposite end here. And I'm going to try and tighten it as best I can. And then what I'm going to do, as you see your hole there, I'm going to send it through the diagonal over to here. Then I'm going to go straight across from it. And you're going to kind of weave it in like a star. I'm going to come down here. Send the needle through. Then I'm going to come up here and send the needle through the top of the star and back down again. And you'll see that actually goes in and closes it up there. So. So once you've got your star set in, then you'll tie it off. And I like to tie it off pretty tight, as tight as I can. Okay, turn it right side out. And your head is now ready to be stuffed. Now if you want to add safety eyes, you'll need to go in and add them here. And I usually follow the line down to the base of the snout, add it there, and add it there. And that is your head. And you can stuff it pretty firm because I've stuffed the arm and the leg I've already made pretty firm. So there is your head, and that's how you do the head. And to get started on the body, we're going to go from top to bottom. And you're just going to erupt circularly. So you're going to do an erupt cast on. Push those down. Okay, and then you're just going to e-wrap circularly. So you're just going to continue to e-wrap circularly for... You're going to e-wrap circularly for a total of 24 rows. So you're going to go in, you're going to e-wrap circularly for a total of 24 rows. So pause the video, e-wrap 24 rows, and then we will go from there and I'll show you the pearl plus tail row, which is the hardest row of the body, and then how to finish that up. Okay, I have finished my 24 rows, and now I'm ready to do my tail row. And so what I'm going to do is purl 15 pegs. Okay, now that we've purled our 15, we're going to take the next six pegs we're going to work our tail. So we're going to ear up six. For two rows, 
there's our second row. Then we're going to e wrap five. E wrap four for two rows. So here's row one. And here's row two. Then we're going to e-wrap three. Then e-wrap two. And we are officially at the tip of the tail. Now we're going to work our way down. So we're going to e-wrap three. going to e-wrap four for two rows, so here's row one. And row two. Then we're going to e-wrap five. six for two rows. So here's row one. And here is row two. And we'll have just completed our tail. Now so we don't have to sew the tail up, we're going to bring the original loops back and I'll show you again the cheating method. So you go to the next unworked peg, you follow the ladder back and you see the next bridge. You pick it up and put it on. You follow that, there's your next bridge, and there's your next bridge, there's your next bridge, and there's your next bridge. And there's your next bridge. Okay. And you will see there is your tail. Now what you're going to do is you're going to purl 15 to get yourself back around. Okay, at this rate we're going to e-wrap circularly for seven rows. So you're just going to e-wrap around circularly for seven rows. And so go ahead and pause the video and complete that much. And then I will show you how to finish up the body. Okay, I've completed my seven rows and you can easily see the tail. And now I need to finish it off. So what I'm going to do is decrease every other peg. So go ahead and wrap that first peg, take that loop, put it on the next peg, toss the bottom loop over. So you're going to decrease by every other peg and then you're going to do a drawstring cast off. Okay, we've decreased by every other peg. Now it's time to draw a string cast off and you're going to cut a long tail. Okay, 
and you're just going to go through and each loop that it, each peg that has a loop you're just going to send that tail working yarn through and take it off through the peg with a loop on it take it off I do this all the way around. Okay. Draw string that together. Tie it off. Stuff. And there is your bottom with the tail. Okay, now we want to move to our legs, but that's how you finish up the body. To do the arms, you're going to ear up cast on 20 pegs. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, yeah, I have to recount it. point you're going to wrap back and forth for a total of 22 rows and then you are going to decrease by every other peg and then you're going to do a draw string cast off but for now go ahead and pause your video and complete 22 rows of wrap back and forth and this will be your arm Okay, I've completed 20 rows of E-Wrap and now I need to go about casting off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to E-Wrap one more row. Okay, now I want it nice and smooth so I'm going to do a decrease. So I'm going to E-Wrap the first peg. Move that stitch over to the next peg, toss the bottom loop over, ear out the next peg, move that over, toss the bottom loop over, ear out the next peg, move that over, toss the bottom loop over, ear out the next peg, and do this all the way across. Okay, and then we're going to cut an end, and then we're going to draw string the end together. So I'm going to send, I'm going to go and cross over to the opposite end and send that tail through every single stitch. Okay, and then take all those stitches off and then draw string it together. And then what you're going to do is sew up the side there. So I take my long string and then I tighten it and then I go and sew it up and you'll need a crafter's needle for that. Then you'll want to tie it off and stop it. Now moving on to the leg and you can still use this loom. I'm just going to be showing it on a larger loom so that I can keep working. Um, 
but again you can do it on this loom. What you're going to do is you're doing the e-wrap cast on like we've been doing and it's going to be a total of your it's going to be a total of 24 pegs that you're going to cast on okay so you're going to e-wrap cast on 24 pegs and then you're going to e-wrap for eight rows back and forth okay and this is what the foot should look like and the eight rows is up through here and so now we're going to decrease in here so that we can get it narrower and go up the legs so what we're going to do now is we're going to take that end loop we're going to move it over one then we're going to go over here and we're going to take this end loop and we're going to move it over one and then we're going to e-wrap the row Okay, toss both loops over on those decreased pegs. Both loops over. Okay. Now we're going to be decreasing again on both sides. So take that loop on the end move it over to the next peg there's that side take the other side move it over one peg and then you're going to e-wrap toss both loops over on those decreased pegs you're going to go back to e-wrapping flat and you're going to do that for a total of 11 rows and then you're going to cast off so go ahead and pause the video and complete e-wrapping back and forth for 11 rows and then I will show you how to cast off and sew up the bottom of the booty okay I have completed my 11 rows now it's time to go in and cast it off. So I'm going to ear out pegs 1 and 2. Place loop 2 onto peg 1. Toss the bottom loop over. Move over 1. Ear out peg 2. Move that loop over. Toss the bottom loop over. And you're going to do this all the way over until you have no more loops. Okay, you're going to snip the end. You're going to pull that through. Okay. Now, what I like to do so that it's a little easier to sew up is tighten up this cast on here. And I go to the opposite end of my tail and I start pulling on those cast on loops. And they're pretty easy to see, too. And you just yank on them and tighten them up. Now we want to sew our leg up, so I'm going to flip it where the right side is out. Then I'm going to take this end that I've got and I'm going to sew it up. I like to sew the bottom up first, so I like to sew this up first and then go back and sew up the front. Okay, and then I like to go in and sew up the front now. I usually just cut me off an extra piece of yarn.
can be a little bit trouble trying to find your end. But you want to make sure that you get the very edges so that your foot area stands out. Tie that off. And then you'll want to stuff your legs. You're going to make two of these and two of the arms and stuff them. And then I will show you how to assemble. Okay, let's put our bear together. First things first, what I like to do is sew the head onto the body first. So here's our body. And what I like to do is make sure that my front center and my tail goes back center, line up, and then I sew it on. And the easiest way to find your front center is where your tail is, because that's where your front center is. So you can just tie that down. Okay. And what I like to do is weave in and out some on the body. Pull through. Then take and pull through on the edge. Now this can be difficult to find the very very edge on the head so you'll have to pull it out some. So weave a little bit. Then go in. Find the next section. And you're going to do this all the way around and make sure that your back lines up with your tail all the way around and then you're going to tie it off. Just go ahead and pause the video and sew on your head and then I'll show you how to sew on the arms and then the legs. Okay, so there's our head and it's sewn in and I've taken my crochet hook and what I'll do is I'll go in up through area and pull it through into the middle is how I hide my ends. Now it's time to sew on our arms and I like to go at the very top of the body, follow the line of the ear down, and sew down through here. So in between these two columns is where I'm going to be sewing. And I know that this is my bottom seam and so I tend to fold it in half Follow that line down and then find where I want it to start, which is right about there. And then I go up in there and pull up those sections between those columns. That gives me a really consistent stitch. Go in and tie it down. Stick the crochet hook in. Grab it.
کنه You're gonna sew on the other arm just exactly the same way and then when you go to sew on your leg I tend to stick the needle through the halfway point then what I do is I find my edge here and I follow that line down and I'm going to sew the leg on to that purled line that you see there that'll make it easier to see exactly where the leg is supposed to go and so I'm going to find my outer edge of my leg line it up with my arm and then I'm going to sew from the middle back towards the arm Snug up those seams. Then I'm going to send the needle through the end and pull up through the middle. And this will allow me to sew the other direction without having to cut the yarn. Okay. Tighten that up, then you can tie it off. You can do the same thing with the other leg and arm. Send your crochet hook through, pull the string in. So go ahead and Pause the video, sew your other arm and your leg on, and then I will show you where the eyes need to go. Now that I've sewn my teddy bear together, as you can see, it's time to add the eyes. And I always like to make homemade eyes with buttons, and you can get the uh, rhinestones. The uh, yeah, like half pearled rhinestones or that kind of thing are circular rhinestones, and you can go in and hot glue them in the middle of smaller buttons, and that way you can make eyes of your own, and you don't have to bother with buying them unless you absolutely want to do the safety eyes, and you can. Um, me, I found it cheaper. To do it this way and I find that when you hot glue um, buttons like this on it doesn't come off. I've yanked and pulled and, and not even my own child who plays with the stuffed animals I make has managed to pull them off. So where I like to glue my eyeballs on as I like to generally follow the inside of the ear down to the base of the snout and you'll see the base of the snout is there and you'll see that I have it kind of lined up with the top of the ear see there's the top edge of the ear down to the base but you can go in and adjust it if you like you can do the eyes in the middle if you'd like um, It's mostly play with it, find out where you like the eyes. Sometimes in the middle looks better to me, sometimes further, closer together. So it's kind of gauge where you think the eyes would look best. I might go a little more on the middle this time. Put them a little further apart. But what you want to do is you want to find out where you want your eyes, and they're going to be at the basis now and it's going to be somewhere in here between the middle and the upper part of the ear lined up at the base of the snout and then you're just going to add some hot glue and glue on the eyes and you're done that's how you make a teddy bear that's how you limited a teddy bear <laughs>